Hey guys, this is Anna Medesu, and this recap of Aaliyah sometimes hides her feelings in Russian Season 1. Aaliyah is half Russian and half Japanese. His grades are the best in school. She's also excellent at sports. But she isn't just any popular girl, she is so popular that all the students stare at her and lean toward the ground she walks on. One morning, as she walked toward the school, she drew countless admiring glances. Among the admirers was Ando, a second-year student who stopped her in her tracks. He greeted her warmly, commenting on the pleasant morning, but Aaliyah's response remained impassive. However, Aaliyah shatters his self-worth and tells him she has zero interest in him, leaving him speechless. However, she paused when she noticed his necklace. Pointing out that it was against school rules, she left Ando standing there. Aaliyah entered class 1B, instantly capturing the attention of every student except her benchmate, Kuzma Sachika, who was sound asleep on his chair. Aliyah kicked his chair hard, causing Kuz to tumble to the floor. She repeated her greeting, questioning whether he had stayed up watching late-night anime again. Aliyah, exasperated, called him stupid instead. Aliyah calls him insane, but Masachika insists that if it's for the culture, they'll gladly be put in straight jackets. She then stares as he yawns wide enough to accommodate an eggplant. She says something in Russian, and he asks what it was. She says it means he looks pathetic. Kuz, resigned, turned away, muttering a dismissive response. The introductory chemistry lesson began with the teacher explaining concepts at the front of the class. Kuz sat sleepily in his chair, his eyes half open one moment and closed the next. When he finally dozed off, Aaliyah poked his waist with her pencil, jolting him awake. The teacher asks what the answer is, so Masachika looks to Aaliyah for help. She points him to an answer and Masachika confidently repeats it, but he ends up being dead wrong. Kuz, feeling embarrassed, promised to do better, but the teacher admonished him for giving the wrong answer. Aaliyah shot back with a sharp look, denying his claims as lies and slander. Aaliyah claims she was pointing out the question number, but Masachika just knows she's full of it especially with that evil smile. Aliyah then spoke something in Russian, causing Kuz's face to blush pink momentarily. When he asks what she said, she calls him stupid. In reality, Kuz understood Russian without Aliyah knowing. He knew she had actually said that he is cute. This wasn't the first time he had heard her say similar things before. Internally, Kuz fumed, knowing she thought he was clueless. <laughs> Kuz reminisced about his childhood, recalling the Russian girl who lived near his grandpa's house. Imagining Aliyah's face turning beet red and her fainting if he ever revealed his secret understanding, Kuz quickly dismissed the idea. There was no way he was going to admit it now. At 9.50, it was time for a break. Kuz began checking his phone, prompting a reminder from Aliyah about the school's ban on mobile phone use, except in emergencies or for reference. Reacting swiftly, Aliyah stood on her desk and seized his phone. Kuz protested loudly, but Aliyah took a moment to scrutinize the screen. She noted the silver-haired, kimono-clad figure and questioned why Tsukiyomi. Aliyah then muttered in Russian about her own silver hair, feeling a pang of jealousy. When Kuz gasped in surprise and asked her to repeat herself, Aliyah coldly referred to him as a game junkie. Kuz, taking offense, retorted that as a free-to-play F2P player, he shouldn't be labeled alongside pay to win P2W players or whales. Later, Masachika has lunch with his friends when they notice the student council walk in Aliyah, the treasurer Yuki, the spokesperson and Maria, the secretary and Aliyah's sister. The boys agree that the Kujo sisters are smoking hot. But Maria turns down everyone who asks her out, saying she already has someone. Aliyah says Takashi's got no shot with her since his head is shaped like a doorknob, so Takashi calls him out on being full of it, just because he's friends with Aliyah. Meanwhile, the girls look around for a place to sit, and when Yuki spots Masachika's uninterested look, she asks if they can sit with them. The boys agree, so the girls join them. Yuki notices Masachika got ramen just like her, but when she realizes the food tastes like battery acid, she suggests sprucing it up with the student council. Masachika warns her not to bring personal preferences into admin matters, but she fondly tells him she's only joking. At that moment, Aliyah looks at Yuki like she's some stain and asks if they are friends. Yuki explains that they've known each other since childhood since they went to the same preschool. When Masachika asks if the girls are friends too, Yuki says she'd like to be, but Aliyah warns her that being friends with her isn't exactly fun. At that point, the boys decide to take their lunch elsewhere, and Takashi explains the girls are just too shiny for their virgin eyes. Once the dead weight has been dropped, Yuki inches close to Masachika and asks if he's considered her idea of joining the student council. Masachika says he would rather watch that 2010 Airbender movie we don't talk about. Yuki tells Aliyah that Masachika used to be her vice president back in middle school, and he's very capable. Aliyah switches to Russian and says she doesn't have to tell her that. <laughs>
何度も言ったろ元生徒会副会長なんでだから出たんだよ中等部生徒会は意外に思われるかもしれませんがある人なんですよ教えたたいやつないよ Later, Yuki says her goodbyes. Alia, somewhat taken aback, questioned their close relationship, revealing her surprise that Su would want to be friends with Kuz. Kuz, perplexed by her astonishment, pointed out that there was already a girl who considered herself his friend, referring to Alia herself. Later, Masachika dreams of the good old days when he used to play with a blonde Russian girl. When he wakes up, he remembers how he was such a simp that he studied Russian just to talk to her. Yet he doesn't remember her name. Arriving at school early due to day duty, Kuz entered the classroom and started cleaning. He organized the chairs and cleaned the blackboard. When Alia arrived, Alia was surprised at Kuz's early arrival, teasing him about it. Kuz, noticing her socks were dirty, inquired if she had stepped in a puddle. Alia explained that a truck had splashed her on the way to school, but she had spare socks. Alia then questioned Kuz about his past involvement with the student council alongside Suo, hinting at whether he'd join again. Kuz dismissed the idea, stating he wasn't interested. Alia seemed to want to say something but changed her mind. Then asked Kuz to fetch her spare socks from her locker since she had taken off her dirty ones. Kuz reluctantly agreed, fetched the socks, and handed them to her. Masachika reluctantly agrees, but when she tells him to put it on her, he tries to chicken out. She says it would be a nice treat for him for helping her get it. Alia asked him to put the socks on for her. Kuz was taken aback, stammering in surprise, but Alia insisted it was a small favor in return for his help. When he asks what she said, she says she called him a coward. So Masachika grabs her foot and decides to do as she's asked. Alia starts freaking out, saying she wasn't ready yet, but Masachika tells her to stop squirming so he can get it in. However, he accidentally touches her in her restricted area, so she immediately kicks him in the face and gives him a peek of heaven in the process. Oh, そしてその発散を何あや育児なしって言っただけよその必要はないまあいいわじあっあっあそうだけどでな、なにさすがに育児なしとああちょっとま、心の準備が<笑>あっどこ触ってあっ<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Later, Aliyah gives him the cold shoulder, so he approaches her and tries to apologize. Kuz tried to apologize through messages but failed. During a break, he approached Aliyah, asking for forgiveness. When she tries to see if he's okay, he deflects and thanks her for giving him a preview of the promised Everland. Aliyah, initially cold, admitted she wasn't mad anymore and apologized for kicking him, prompting Aliyah to punch him hard and storm away. After 10 minutes chasing around, they both exhausted. Kuz sincerely apologized again, offering her Oshiruko as a peace offering. Aliyah, Initially suspicious of his motives, eventually accepted it, pretending she was thirsty. Alia muttered in Russian again, that have meaning offering a sip. Knowing what it meant, Kuz felt inner turmoil, but he chickened out and acted as he usually did. The next morning, Yuki asks Masachika to help her clean the council room. He reluctantly agrees since he's not used to physical work, but he meets up with her anyway. They start chatting, but then Alia appears from behind some boxes, looking and knowing how close Yuki and Masachika are. Masachika realizes Yuki probably set this up on purpose, knowing that Alia likes him. They start cleaning, and Yuki keeps chatting, which seems to irritate Alia even more. Alia tells Masachika to pay more attention to the work. Yuki sees this as the perfect time to leave, so she excuses herself and goes out suddenly. Masachika hears Alia mumble in Russian, saying she wants some attention and telling him to come closer. Masachika secretly understands Russian, but is confused by her behavior. Luckily, they finish the cleaning quickly, and Masachika is about to leave when a tall senior enters the room. The senior is surprised to see the room so clean. Yuki tells him that Masachika helped, so the senior thanks Masachika and introduces himself as Ken, the president of the student council. Ken says he has heard a lot about Masachika from both Aliyah and Yuki, but Masachika feels uncomfortable and decides to leave. Ken stops him, insisting that since Masachika helped after school, he will buy him dinner. Masachika politely refuses, saying he was just helping friends. Before he can leave, Yuki jumps in and suggests that he accept the offer since he would have to cook for himself at home anyway. Ken decides for them and also invites both Yuki and Alia to join them for dinner later that evening. They all go to a diner. Ken thanks Masachika again for helping with the council work. Yuki mentions that Masachika is good at physical tasks and finishes them quickly. She also says he is an expert negotiator. Ken immediately recognizes his talent and offers him a position on the student council. Masachika politely refuses, explaining that he has done student council work before and didn't enjoy it in middle school. Ken agrees that it is a lot of work but mentions the benefits like automatic recommendations to the best colleges. Despite this, Masachika shows no interest as he simply wants to watch recaps and enjoy life. 
Unfortunately for him, Yuki won't stop pushing him to run for student council president again, just like they did in middle school. He firmly refuses. Ken mentions that Yuki will have tough competition because Aliyah is also planning to run for president. Surprised, Masachika looks at Alia for confirmation, and she nods, saying she will run against Yuki next year. Before they can discuss further, their food arrives. After dinner, they part ways with Ken and Yuki heading in one direction, leaving Masachika to walk Aliyah home. On the way, Masachika asks Aliyah if she is really going to run against Yuki, but Alia seems reluctant to talk about it and tells him she will go on her own from there. Masachika says goodbye and heads home, only to find Yuki sprawled on the couch reading a romantic novel. It turns out Yuki is actually Masa's sister, but she pretends to be his love interest to make Aliyah jealous and more interested in him. He tells her he doesn't need her help and goes to bed. The next morning, Yuki wakes Masachika up by jumping on his bed, even though it's a Sunday. She drags him to a mall for breakfast and then tries to get him to watch a movie with her. He refuses, and they head to a nearby clothing store. Noticing Yuki's changed behavior, he asks her what's going on. She tells him she saw Aliyah tailing them, so she's going to stop behaving like his sister. Before Masachika can respond, Yuki greets Aliyah warmly. Embarrassed, Aliyah pretends she just happened to be shopping and ran into them by coincidence. Yuki asks Aliyah if she has had lunch yet and invites her to join them at a restaurant. She then asks if Aliyah likes spicy food. Aliyah, who has only had mildly spicy curry before, claims she is fine with spices. Yuki tells her they are going to a ramen place that serves very spicy food and invites her along. Masachika decides to come clean and warns Aliyah that this restaurant's ramen is insanely spicy. Aliyah feels like Masachika is trying to push her away to be alone with Yuki, so she decides to join them anyway. They go to the ramen place, which scares Aliyah with its frightening appearance. Masachika warns her she's making a mistake, but Aliyah insists on joining them. They soon order ramen bowls. Aliyah notices Yuki dressed in boyish clothes and remarks on it. Yuki seizes the opportunity and jokes that she borrowed one of Masachika's shirts from that morning when they were in bed together. Masachika spits out his water trying to explain, but Yuki interrupts, asking Aliyah how she likes the dish. The spice hits her immediately, but she pretends to be fine. Yuki and Masachika start eating, unfazed by the spice as they are used to it. Masachika hears Aliyah mumbling in Russian about how insanely hot it is and gets worried, asking her not to eat it and suggesting they get something else. Aliyah insists she likes the heat, even though Masachika can see her tearing up. Eventually, unable to control herself, Aliyah screams loudly and runs out of the restaurant. Masachika follows Aliyah and finds her alone in a park. He asks if she's okay. Aliyah says she is fine, but Masa offers to get her some ice cream, and she immediately agrees. He buys her a triple scoop, which she enjoys much more than the spicy ramen. While she is eating, Masachika asks why she wants to become the council president. This sours her mood, and she tells him she just wants to try. He asks if she has a partner, but she replies that she doesn't, claiming she can do it herself. He explains that she needs a vice president to run with her. She says she'll find a random person to put their name down, but mutters in Russian that she would want him to be her partner. After finishing her ice cream, Olya asks if Masachika has any plans and if he can help her shop for clothes. Masachika agrees, saying they are friends, which surprises her a bit. She wonders if he pities her because he thinks she can't beat Yuki. Determined, she angrily heads to the changing room, but gets nervous about his reaction when she comes out in a new dress. Masachika immediately compliments her, saying she looks even prettier. This makes her happy, and she goes back to try on more outfits, each time getting compliments from Masachika. Feeling confident, she tries on something more revealing. However, when she opens the curtains to pose, she sees Yuki has arrived. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the curtains, wanting to crawl into a hole. Later that evening, they head back together on the train. Aliyah is too frazzled to talk. When Yuki and Masachika's stop comes, they bid her goodbye and get off. Aliyah starts cursing herself for wearing something so revealing, worried Masachika will think badly of her. Suddenly, she realizes they got off at the same station and wonders if she should spy on them. Aliyah returns back home looking a little down, but she is immediately pounced on by her own sister who hugs her and asks how her day was. Aliyah very lazily replies that it was fine before moving into her room. Masha, however, is not fooled so easily and asks Aliyah whether something happened because she isn't acting like her usual self. 
Aliyah takes a deep breath and claims that she just came back after meeting Mesachika and his childhood friend. Masha immediately starts smiling as she realizes that this is about a boy and asks Aliyah whether she likes him. Aliyah immediately defends herself by saying that she has no such feelings for him and claims that they are only friends and nothing else. Masha starts laughing and asks, how did this guy manage to steal her heart? Considering she never liked being friends with anyone who was a lazy slacker, she always wanted her friends to be perfectionists. She realizes that Masha is right as six years ago, when she was still in Russia, they ended up getting a group project about learning the ins and outs of the local businesses. She eagerly divided group works amongst her friends and rigorously planned everything out, wanting their report to be the best in the class. She followed the schedule perfectly and collected data on several businesses all alone on Sunday. But when she went back to school on Monday, she found out that none of her friends had even started thinking about it. She gets worked up and tells them that the report will take a lot of time to write, but her friends seem unconcerned, claiming that they have a full week to work on it. Suddenly, the blondie notices her work notebook and picks it up, claiming that Aaliyah has literally written a whole essay already. They tell her to chill out as this is just a school assignment, but Aaliyah is one of those perfectionists who got no chill, so she tells them to take this seriously. This results in her getting into a major argument with the blondie, who tells her to do it all alone if she wants to be such a perfectionist and leaves. Later that evening, Aliyah stays up late and keeps writing the report, and continues to do so every single day until finally the results of the report are unveiled. A different group ends up winning because their report was more cohesive, while Aliyah holds back her tears, clutching her group work that she did all alone. That day, while walking back home with tears glistening on her cheeks, she decides that from now on she will never depend on anybody because they will always disappoint her no matter what. After that, she ended up qualifying for a very difficult examination and got transferred to Japan. On her first day, she ended up giving a speech at the ceremony, which immediately made her a favorite. After the assembly when the class was about to start, she noticed Masachika for the first time, sleeping on his desk with no care in the world. She wakes him up, claiming that the class is about to start, and he groggily tells her that her speech was phenomenal. She introduces herself very cordially, as she expected everyone at this super prestigious school to be perfectionists like her. Slowly the facade wears down as she notices that most students here are slackers as well, and most of all, Masachika was the biggest slacker never bringing the correct books, always behind in physical education, and literally sleeping through the entire math class. Soon, she starts going back into her shell and not talking to others because they were disappointing her once again. Soon the seasons change and the school festival arrives. They all divide duties and start working on it, but even after being behind in all aspects, the students are very chill about it and go back home, while Alia works overtime sewing the banner as she felt all alone once again. She hurts herself once again and puts on a band-aid when suddenly the door slams open and Masachika enters the room. Alia is surprised to see him after the school is over, but he claims that she shouldn't overwork and go back home. Alia at this point is pretty prickly and tells him to mind his own business as she has a lot of work to do, but he tells her not to worry as he has sorted everything out. He used some connections to get permissions to stay overnight in the school. He also made some friends in the handicraft club and convinced them to help with the festival work as well, so now there are a lot of people who can help. He tells her to relax and go back home, but her feelings finally end up coming out as she tears up and claims that she can't relax because she wants to put on a really good festival, which people will genuinely enjoy, and she won't be satisfied with anything shabby. She will not compromise on the quality of work, no matter what. He tells her that she is putting all her efforts in the wrong places. He claims that she is putting all her efforts into doing everything alone, but if she was smarter, she would have focused all her attention on convincing everyone else to work together, which would have lowered the load on her, as well as involve all the students. She stands up and leaves the room, wondering what the hell is that guy's problem. <laughs> The next day, however, is a total shift from what she was dealing with, as Masachika somehow motivated everyone to do their best for the festival. They started coming up with hundreds of ideas for attractions, they started staying late in the school, having fun and working together, and slowly Alia started opening up to her classmates again. The day of the festival finally comes, and it turns out to be a total hit as their attraction ends up winning the best attraction in the school award by a large margin. The festival finally ends with a student dance, where Alia finds Masachika sitting all alone. He asks why she is not dancing as everyone and their mothers would want to dance with her, but she claims that she doesn't want to dance right now because every boy keeps bothering her about it. 
Masachika laughs and tells her that because of her attitude, everyone has started calling her the Ice Princess, but Alea doesn't seem thrilled about it. She claims that she doesn't like the fact that they call her a princess because it makes her feel like she was born with everything, even though she has worked very hard for everything she has achieved till now. Masachika smiles and tells her that he won't call her that name. Then Alia turns to him and apologizes for lashing out at him the other day, and asks whether she could do anything for him to show her gratitude. Masachika tells her that she doesn't need to do all that as she was still the person who put the most effort, but Alia claims that she needs to repay him for his kindness. Masachika decides to take matters into his own hands and takes her arm before running into the grounds, asking Alia for a dance as her thanks. Finally, we return back to the present where Masha claims that it sounds like the start to a beautiful love story. But Alia again claims that he is just a friend because he is capable and can get things done. The next morning, Masachika goes to the student council to cover for Yuki as she didn't come that day. There he ends up meeting with Masha, who tells Masachika that she has heard a lot about him and wanted some help with shopping for supplies. He agrees and she immediately thanks him and grabs his hands. Suddenly she feels a familiar feeling as if she has met him before and asks him for his full name. Masachika tells her his full name and immediately she realizes something but keeps her mouth shut and tells him in Russian that they should get moving. They start walking back when she enters a tea shop to try some of their tea, and while she was tasting the different types of brewing methods, Masachika suddenly remembers how his parents separated when he was young, and he decided to stay with his dad, but Yuki ended up choosing their mom, forcing the siblings to be separated from each other. Suddenly he snaps back to reality only to find Masha in front of him looking worried. She tells him that he looks pained and immediately hugs him while stroking his hair. This completely shocks him as he feels a wave of nostalgia come over him, as he wonders why this feels so familiar and relaxing. Their session quickly gets over though because he gets burned by the hot teacup while still wondering why Masha's touch reminds him of his childhood. Later that day, they walk back over to the student council room where the president immediately notices the huge toy in Masha's arms. He tells her that the student council shouldn't be a place to put soft toys. But Masha doesn't seem to care about it and keeps telling him that she wanted to get him a lion. The president walks up to the shopping bags, scared. What else did Masha buy? Thankfully, the remaining things were ordinary school supplies, which brings him some relief. He thanks Masachika for helping them buy the supplies, as he doesn't trust Masha to shop alone. Masachika can totally understand it, as he knows Masha would have made the council room a total theme park if left alone. The president again tells Masachika that he should reconsider his decision to join the student council, as they need capable people like him. Masha seems to be in agreement, as she claims that he should at least join them on paper. Masachika asks why they are so hell-bent on making him join the council. And the president replies that he thinks Masachika has a special talent with sorting things out, which is very important for a student council. He claims that Masachika was an excellent vice president during his junior school, and Masachika replies that while working in that position, he realized that there were no real ambitions or goals of his that he would be able to achieve if he continued being in that position. So, it doesn't make sense for him. The president tells him that goals don't need to be 100% aligned with the goal of working at full efficiency. He claims that he joined the student council not because he wanted to transform the school for the better, but because he wanted to win the heart of the girl he liked. He whips out his phone and shows Masachika a picture of a fat, insecure-looking fellow. At first, Masachika doesn't identify the person, but Ken claims that it is none other than him from two years ago. Masachika is shocked at the incredible glow-up transformation, while Ken tells him that two years ago he was a loser with bad grades and no talent in any sports. But then he fell in love with a beautiful girl named Sarah, the vice president. She was way too out of his league, so he decided to better himself in order to become a viable match as a boyfriend for a girl like Sarah. Becoming the council president was just a step in achieving that dream, so his reasoning to join the council was very selfish. Masha joins in the conversation and tells Masachika that even she joined just because she was friends with Sasha and wanted to talk to her more, claiming that everyone who joins the council has their own selfish reasons, and that's completely fine. This seems to change Masachika's mind a little, while Ken tells him that it's perfectly fine for him to join the council, even if his sole goal is to help someone become the president. Masachika looks at a smiling Ken and asks him for some time to think upon it. He then realizes that Alia hasn't arrived yet, but Ken tells him that she probably will get late today as she has gone out to mediate a fight between the soccer and baseball teams, as both want to use the field. Masachika immediately leaves the council room as he wonders whether he should check upon Alia to make sure she is doing fine. Meanwhile, Aliyah is not doing very fine, 
as both the soccer and the baseball teams are at each other's throats, hurling insults at each other like a Call of Duty lobby. When Aaliyah tells them to talk politely, none of the teams are willing to go there. They both start arguing again while ignoring poor Aaliyah's voice. She realizes that she always decided to work alone, and because of that she has no idea how to deal with people and make them listen to her. Tears start rolling down her cheeks as she wonders whether she is fit to be in the student council. Meanwhile, Masachika reaches the area and overhears the heated discussion. While Aaliyah failed to mediate them, Hughes decides that it is good experience for her and was about to leave when he hears her call out for help in Russian, which only he understood. He decides to intervene in the middle and introduces himself to them as the student council member in charge of the general affairs. Aaliyah seems surprised but relieved to see him as he quickly takes control of the situation and claims that, because the baseball team has fewer members, they will move to the smaller Riverside field. But in return, the soccer team members will help the baseball team move all their equipment. At first, both teams seemed uncertain about this compromise, but the managers of the soccer team speak up, volunteering to help the baseball team move. Seeing a couple of beauties willing to help them out soon soften the baseball team as well, and they agreed to the compromise. When they run into Ken, who asks whether everything got sorted out. Masachika immediately realizes that Ken planned all of this to begin with, as he asks Masachika for his decision about the council. Masachika takes a deep breath and tells him that he is ready to join the student council, which shocks Aaliyah, while Ken tells him to come to the council immediately to get his joining form. Later that night, when they start walking back, Aaliyah asks Masachika whether he is joining the council to help Yuki become the new president, and Masachika asks what she will do if he does decide to help her. Yuki takes a deep breath and tells him that she won't back down and will fight against him to become the new president, which makes Masachika smile. He tells her that he has decided to help her become the new president, not Yuki. This catches Aaliyah off guard, while Masachika promises that he will help her become the president of the council, no matter what, and offers her his hand. Aaliyah wipes off her tears and takes his hand before smiling at him, which suddenly makes his heart feel something which he hasn't felt since the time he met that blonde girl in his childhood. Suddenly, Aaliyah twists his hand, asking whether he was thinking about some other girl right now, making Masachika sweat, who wonders what to say in this situation. Dakara. She asks him whether he was thinking about Yuki, and he immediately denies it, but she thinks he is lying and delivers a tight slap, knocking him to the floor. She then walks up to him and helps him back to his feet before they start walking back together. On the way, they talk about everyday life, making jokes, and having fun. When they finally reach Aaliyah's apartments and the time to say goodbye comes, Aaliyah asks whether his cheek is still aching, but he claims that it's just stinging a little, but he should be fine, as he has experience with getting peppers sprayed by girls. Aaliyah decides to relieve some of the pain as she walks up to him and plants a light kiss on his cheek, making him blush as she walks away, claiming that it was just a friendly kiss. Masachika can't believe what just happened as he stands there blankly, wondering why this Russian girl is playing with his heart like this. Now we're with Masachika, who is reflecting on what happened with Elisa. He's questioning what he was thinking, feeling embarrassed about the events that unfolded. He also remembers that Elisa confessed she liked him, which might mean she was genuinely flirting and not just joking around. Masachika thinks her words came from the heart, but quickly convinces himself that it can't be true, assuming that she was just caught up in the moment like he was. He imagines that she might have regained her senses and is now crying. This reminds him of a family argument, where his mother accused his father of not coming home often because of work. Masachika feels uncomfortable and believes that love is fickle and unreliable, thinking it's foolish to worry about it. He doesn't think much of himself when it comes to supporting Elisa, especially since he left home and used his surname to Yuki. When Masachika arrives at his apartment, he's surprised to see Yuki's shoes because shoes because she had mentioned having other things to do. He wonders if today's events were orchestrated by Yuki to influence the student council, and then he walks in on her in the bathroom, barely covered by a towel. Yuki reacts with an exaggerated scream, calling him a pervert, but Masachika stays calm and accuses her of setting this up. She readily admits it, but then asks if he's curious why she did it. She reveals that they've lived together for years, but never had a moment where he accidentally saw her changing. She believes every brother experiences that at least once. Masachika dismisses her explanation, accusing her of acting like an anime character, which offends her. Yuki then acts dramatically, pointing to an imaginary camera and explaining that this was her way of compensating him for what happened earlier. She teases him about not being interested in her body, which she claims is a sign of his seriousness. Masachika, taking the conversation seriously, reveals that blatant exposure doesn't excite him and that subtlety is more appealing. This shocks Yuki, who hadn't considered this perspective. She continues to tease him, claiming he looked at her entire body, but he admits he only glanced up to her chest, prompting her to call him a chest monster.
。大方、俺が玄関のドア出てきたろ。バレたか。バレるわ。だろうおいおい、待ちたまえよ。まあ、聞きたまえ、マサチカ君。長いこと人、着替え遭遇イベントを消化には、妹の着替えに遭遇する。というわけでサービスし、これは騙し討ちみたいにしちゃう。すかしたこと言ってくれるじゃねえか。カリズムこそが正義だ。<笑> After she gets dressed, Yuki follows Masachika to his room and asks if the student council president and Masachika convinced him to join. He confirms this and adds that he's supporting Elisa for the presidency. After a brief silence, Yuki angrily accuses Elisa of stealing her brother's attention, even joking about the size of their breasts. Masachika is clearly uncomfortable and asks her to stop with the graphic comments. Yuki insists that he should appreciate smaller breasts and even jokes about letting him touch hers, but then recalls that he did accidentally grab her chest once in elementary school during a game. Masachika is embarrassed and brushes off her claim as a typical sibling situation. Yuki gets upset and asks for some affection, which he agrees to by gently brushing her hair. As they calm down, Yuki acknowledges the rivalry between them and apologizes for any discomfort, reassuring him that she knows he loves her dearly. They share a laugh, and Yuki leaves the room alone. She feels a mix of surprise and sadness, realizing that someone else has motivated her brother, though she's determined not to lose to this new rival. The next morning, Masachika finds it odd that Yuki hasn't woken him up as usual, thinking the news from the previous day might have affected her. As he gets out of bed, Masachika feels a hand grab his ankle, startling him. Yuki emerges from under the bed, showing she's not depressed or anything like that. However, after a few seconds of silence, she asks for his help to get unstuck. Instead of helping her, Masachika playfully wraps her in his sheets while she complains about the smell, saying it stinks of man and that she's going to faint in the classroom. Elisa focuses intently on Masachika's arrival, puzzled by her own nervousness since he usually shows up half asleep. When Masachika arrives and greets her, she is surprised to see him looking unexpectedly sharp. Upon closer inspection, She thinks he seems different, more striking than usual, though she tries to downplay it by assuming he'll knock off at any moment. But during class, she notices him staying focused, which confuses her and makes her wonder if he's truly changing his behavior because of her. Later, in the gym, Masachika is suddenly hit on the head by a ball and steps outside for a break. Elisa follows him to check if he's okay. Despite him assuring her that it's nothing, she gets closer and compares their foreheads to check his temperature, making him nervous. At that moment, Masachika can't help but notice her large bust, remembering the rumors about her cup size. Elisa then lets her hair down, making her beauty even more striking in his eyes, which makes him wonder if she's doing it on purpose. He looks away but can't resist glancing back, confirming his preference for subtle glimpses. そうか。いいカップ。マジで。なに。ユキ、こういうことだぞ。A few minutes later, they go to get some water, and Masachika is again struck by how attractive Elisa looks. In an attempt to cool off, he dunks his entire head into the water. Elisa arrives and offers him a towel, but when he refuses, she wraps him up and starts drying him herself, giving him another unexpected view of her bust. This shocks Masachika, as he's never seen anything like it before. As they talk, Elisa takes him to say goodbye to Masha, who, despite not being happy about it, remains kind. Walking together afterward, Masachika expects Elisa to insult him as usual, but instead, she turns to him and asks if he's really okay, showing genuine concern about the earlier incident. Masachika reassures her that he's fine and doesn't have a bump. But Elisa reaches out to confirm. He steps back nervously, clarifying that nothing is wrong. Confused by her kindness, he asks why she's being so nice. Elisa explains that she noticed he's been down all day and is simply worried about him. Suddenly, Masachika's stomach growls, breaking the moment. He explains he skipped breakfast, leading Elisa to think that instead of paying attention in class, he was just too hungry to sleep. Annoyed, she reveals she had trouble sleeping after their shared experiences while Masachika seemingly slept without a care. Her angry glare intimidates Masachika, who changes the subject awkwardly, quoting a proverb about turning the other cheek. Elisa snaps back, calling him an idiot and walking away in frustration, feeling her concern was wasted. Masachika, amused, notes that she's still the same Elisa. After class, Masachika asks if they can go to the student council office together. Elisa, still annoyed, silently leads the way, making it clear she's still upset. As they approach the office, they see a group of students apologizing at the door. Masachika recognizes them as members of the football and baseball teams. When he tries to enter, a tough looking girl intimidates him. 
She quickly apologizes, explaining she thought the athletes were causing trouble again. This girl is Chisaki Sarashina, the vice president, known for resolving disputes with a firm hand, sometimes literally with her bamboo sword. Though Masachika had heard rumors about her, he now sees her formidable nature firsthand. Kanaki, another student, reassures her that she only threatened violence to keep order, prompting Chisaki to complain about his phrasing. Despite her tough demeanor, Masachika finds them adorable as a couple, though the impression is shattered when she roughly pats him on the shoulder. Masachika arrives, and Chisaki apologizes to Kanaki for being harsh. He reassures her, saying he's tough enough to handle it. The two share a moment, which Masachika finds bafflingly sweet, prompting a quiet comment from Elisa for him to keep his thoughts to himself. Masachika jokingly suggests that if Chisaki wore a sash, they could call her boss sash, which makes Elisa laugh. Masha remarks on their good relationship just as Yuki arrives, prompting Kanaki to start the student council meeting with all members present. Masachika introduces himself as Masachika, responsible for general affairs, mentioning that Elisa and he plan to run in the upcoming elections. Both the girls leave the room while Masachika wonders what kind of plan Yuki is hatching, as he knows that something is definitely up. His suspicions turn out to be true when Yuki takes Alia to a separate room with no one in sight. There, Alia decides to defuse the tension and apologizes for stealing Masachika as her own partner for the next elections. Yuki looks down and tells Alia not to worry, as this is not her fault and Masachika made his own choices. She doesn't really mind, but she would have been much happier if he had chosen her. Alia looks at her and builds up her courage before asking Yuki what she feels about Masachika. To her absolute surprise, Yuki straight up tells Alia, that she loves Masachika more than anything else in this world, including her own mom and dad. Aliyah is still shocked when Yuki brings up the same question to her and asks whether she likes Masachika as well. Aliyah immediately starts blushing and looks down before replying that Masachika is just a friend to her. Yuki decides to press her even more and asks whether she is in love with her or not. Aliyah finds herself at a loss for words once again, while Yuki pushes her against the wall, claiming that she has already told her that she loves Masachika, and now it's Aliyah's turn to make things clear. Aaliyah struggles for a bit before replying that even though she doesn't know whether she loves him, she will never let Yuki have him. Yuki smiles cheekily and tells her that this is enough conversation for today, as they need to work as well, and leaves the room while Alia wonders what the hell just happened. Meanwhile, back in the council room, Masha and Masachika spend their time cross-checking documents and making corrections wherever needed. Masachika realizes that Masha is really good at her job when his eyes wander off towards Kanaki, who doesn't have enough brain cells to even take out a book properly, as she falls to the ground with all the books. Soon, Masha is also done with her work and tells Masachika that they should take a small tea break before working again. She immediately gets up and heads over to get some black tea, while Masachika asks her whether Russians drink black tea in the summers. She tells him that usually they drink it only during the winters, but since her mother is Japanese and loves black tea, they drink it very often in the summers too. This makes Masachika think about how the girl he liked when he was young also had a mother that loved black tea. When Masha breaks his thoughts and asks whether he knows a lot about Russians, he lies and claims that he has only watched a couple of movies, and that's it, while in fact, he studied really hard to learn as much as possible about Russian culture. Masha soon sits down beside him and starts eating spoonfuls of jam before every sip of tea, which is also a Russian thing. Masachika also tries to do this, but it is too sweet for his taste. Soon after that, Yuki and Alia return from their errand, and Masha immediately sets out to make tea for them as well. Alia looks a little grumpy but puts her chair really close to Masachika and sits down, asking if he has any problem. Masachika immediately looks over to Yuki and realizes that she has pulled some new trick this time and wonders what's going to happen. Masha cheerfully asks Alia whether she found any guy she likes and would love to marry but Alia shakes her head, softly whispering in Russian that it's too early for marriage. Masachika looks at her when Masha puts down a huge plate of jam in front of her, which she starts gulping down angrily. Soon, the president dismisses all of them, and Masachika starts the walk back home with Alia while the sun starts setting. He wonders what Yuki told her, as she looks very stressed, and decides to do something about it. He invites her to a small cafe, claiming that they should discuss a little about their presidential election because they don't get much time during school. Alia whispers in Russian, asking whether this is a date, which makes Masachika blush, but he pretends not to understand it and enters the cafe with her. お疲れ様でした。
なんで今後一緒に会長戦を目指すよかったらちょっと寄っていかないかまあいいわよじゃあ寄ってくかエトニス・フィダーニエとあなたはそういうつもりだったんですか They sit down and she gets two big boy smoothies so she can post them on social media. When Masachika decides to address the Russian in the room and asks whether something happened with Yuki, she gives him an annoyed look and tells him that nothing happened, which just makes him absolutely sure that Yuki pulled some trick on her. Suddenly, Alia asks Masachika whether he is dating Yuki, but Masachika outright denies it, claiming that he would date his own mom before dating Yuki. Alia looks at him suspiciously, so Masachika decides to clear the air and tells her that Yuki is not as ladylike and innocent as she looks and promises that she is simply messing around and teasing her. This makes Alia relax a little while Masachika tells her that they need to do something about Yuki because, as it is, they will definitely lose the elections. Alia looks at him a little frustrated, but he claims that this is the truth. He explains that usually there are many more candidates fighting for an election, and after a general meeting where the candidates are supposed to have a brainless debate like Biden and Trump, Half of the candidates drop out because they realize they don't have any support. Then, finally, the top three candidates are chosen to run in the election, and among them, one is chosen. Unfortunately, this time, everyone thinks that Yuki will win by default, and because of that, no one is even interested in standing against her. While Masachika is giving his monologue, Alia is completely distracted by the fact that even though they are alone in a cafe, he is not acting even a little shy. As if he comes here with different girls every single day. She ends up biting her entire straw before deciding to stress eat right in front of him. Masachika is a little surprised by this, which breaks his train of thought. Alia decides that this is the time to pull the classic move of sharing the same spoon. She asks whether Masachika would like to have a bite, but when he denies, she still tells him to have one bite. She extends the spoon while he asks for a different one, but Alia tells him to shut up and open his mouth as these things are very normal in Russia. Masachika looks at her face and realizes that she is clearly lying, but opens his mouth regardless and rejoices at the first deep throated indirect kiss that he has ever had. Soon, they return to their shy selves when Alea asks what they should do if they want to beat Yuki. Masachika tells her that last year their president wasn't even in the student council and yet ended up winning the elections, but that was because he had a plan. Masachika explains that, at the start of the year, Ken was a fat, average student with poor grades, but as the year went on, he lost all the weight and started doing better academically. This drew all the fat phobic people to his side as they realized that Ken could achieve things through hard work. This way, Ken created a compelling story which is needed for every election. He orders some food for himself and tells her that she should give a speech in front of the entire student body and try to win them that way. Alia agrees and soon his food arrives. They start eating when he offers Alia a bite. She eagerly agrees, but he gives her a different spoon and a bowl to eat from. Because it was super spicy, she ends up tearing up once again. While walking back at night, Alia asks Masachika whether he has any idea who Yuki will be partnering up with. Masachika replies that she shouldn't have much trouble finding a partner, as she is pretty popular, but claims that if she picks Tan as her partner, it would be very difficult for them to win. Alia asks who Tan is, and he explains that she is Yuki's opponent from junior school, who fought till the very end for the position but lost by a small margin. After that, they decide to head back to their homes for the night. The next day, they meet again in the council room, where surprisingly enough, Yuki has already found a new partner. She comes in with a glowing face, smiling at Masachika before revealing that her partner is going to be Ayano from her class, who looks at Masachika directly while he wonders why his sister is tormenting him so much. Ayano looks at him blankly and asks whether he forgot how strict his grandfather is about the matters of family. This brings a distaste to Masachika's mouth as he remembers his grandfather constantly barking about how family is the most important. He tells Ayano that Yuki is still the most important person to him in this world, and he would always be by her side, but at the same time, he is going to help Aliyah win these elections, and that's his final decision. Ayano bows her head and asks whether he has any message for his grandfather, and Masachika heatedly claims that if the old man has anything to say, he should say it to his face and leave Yuki alone. After that, he walks over to his classroom where his two incel friends grab a magazine filled with pictures of idols and ask which one Masachika prefers. Masachika is a true Sigma. Claiming he isn't interested in two-dimensional paper cuttings, but when forced to pick one, he chooses the girl with brown hair. The bald incel immediately comments about how this woman looks like Masha and asks whether Masachika is making moves on her, but Masachika replies that she already has a boyfriend and is way above his league anyway. 
Suddenly, Alia ends up entering the classroom and spots Quest holding the magazine in his hands. This pisses her off as she calls him an animal in Russian before asking why the hell a member of the student council would bring a book like this. Masachika promises that Taki, the single brain cell incel, brought this stupid magazine and not him. Alia doesn't seem to care and sits down annoyed while Taki, who is dumber than Biden himself, asks whether Masachika would like to date Yuki. Masachika replies that they are not in Alabama, so no moreover, he wants a girl who can also be his best friend. Alia smiles and claims in Russian that she can be his best friend as well. This makes Masachika blush while the others ask what's up with him. He tries to change the subject, but Taki's brain is smoother than a bowling ball as he can't get a hint and continues saying that a girl should have a cute smile and be very friendly with everyone. Masachika realizes that Alia is feeling sad about this, so he asks her to be a bit more considerate. This pea-brained incel jumps up and claims that personality doesn't matter as long as the girl is as pretty as Alia. This was the worst thing he could have said to a modern, strong, independent woman as Alia gets into his face and tells him that incels like him will never find a woman who is three-dimensional she grabs the magazine before taking it away. <laughs> Later that day, all of the council members arrive at the council while the girls decide to gamble Kit Kats, as it is already sanctioned in Russia. Yuki decides to take everything away from Alia so she is forced to survive on knockoff products from Russia and seems to be doing pretty well as she is good at bluffing and Alia can't read her well. Sarah Ken and Masachika are sitting at the opposite table keeping scores when Ken comments that he always thought Alia would be more composed, but she seems to be super easy to read which Yuki is taking full advantage of. Masachika laughs, claiming that a battle of wits is where Yuki is at her strongest, when Sarah claims that she can't ever figure out what's going on with Masha, though she always looks with such a pretty angelic smile. It would seem like she is a Russian goddess herself with no flaws. Ken laughs, but then asks about Ayano's relations with Yuki. Masachika replies that she serves Yuki and her family as her grandparents did before her. Sarah is surprised by this and asks whether her parents also serve the Yuki family, but Sarah shakes her head, claiming that they are office workers and she just chose this path because she admired the commitment of her grandparents. She almost lets it slip that Masachika and Yuki are siblings, but Masachika manages to cover it up and tells her to be more careful, as no one in their school knows about their relationship. Ken seems very interested and asks whether she received any kind of special training, and Ayano nods, claiming that her grandparents have drilled it into her that she needs to be like a shadow. Always away from the limelight and working behind the scenes to make sure the person she is serving never has to face any issues. Soon enough, Masha also walks up to their table and sits down beside Masachika, asking Ayano if she can refill her cup. She tells everyone that Alia ended up sending her away as she wanted to play on her own. They all look at both Yuki and Alia, completely engrossed in her game, when Masachika claims that Alia seems to be enjoying herself. The others can't really see this as she seems super stressed about the game. Soon, the bottle of juice they were sharing runs out, so Masachika and Masha decide to head out for a drink run and ask everyone for their preferred drink. Literally, every single person in the room mentions a different drink, but Masachika ends up remembering all of them exactly after one listen, which surprises everyone as he simply walks outside. While walking with Masha as the sun was setting, she thanks him for standing in the elections with Alia, as it means a lot to her. Masachika replies that she doesn't have to thank him for something like that, but Masha claims that this is very special as Alia never lets anyone help her, as she hates depending on others. But surprisingly, she is willing to get help this time. Masachika straight up asks whether she intentionally acts like a stupid thought around Alia. This takes Masha by surprise. But she smiles, claiming that she doesn't want to compete against her own sister as she knows Alia is a super hard worker. This makes Masachika think about his own overachieving sister, who looks so elegant at school, and wonder whether she pretends to be a total nerd at home. He comes to the decision that the person at home is the actual Yuki and not what she becomes at school. Masha asks Masachika why he pretends to be a lazy person when he is super responsible this catches him off guard, but he smiles and claims that he wants to live his life without disappointing anyone, so he tries to act lazy so no one depends on him ever. Masha smiles warmly and pats him on the head, telling him that he is doing a great job Masachika feels like her dog but kind of likes it as well. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
The next morning, Aaliyah gets stream sniped by Tan, the old rival of Yuki, who stops her in the middle of the school and asks why the hell she stooped so low that she pulled Yuki's partner to join her team instead. Aaliyah is shocked at this and doesn't know what to say, while Tan asks her whether she is scared that she would have no chances of winning if Yuki was partnered up with Masachika. Everyone in the school hears this fight and starts watching, embarrassing Aaliyah even more who tells her that Masachika himself wanted to be in her team, but Tan refuses to believe it. Thankfully, Masachika arrives at the right moment and tells Tan to back off, as he indeed chose to run with Aaliyah, and Yuki knows of this and doesn't mind it either. He tells Tan to apologize to Aaliyah, but she walks to him straight up and challenges Masachika to a presidential debate. She claims that people like Masachika shouldn't have a place in the student council, let alone the elections, but Aaliyah intervenes, telling her to back off if she wants to debate him. She will have to go through her. Tan turns out to be a total savage and tells Alia that she is simply a puppet who gets good grades but has no social or life skills, so she will just get herself embarrassed. However, she claims that it might be better for the entire school to get rid of the eye candy from the presidential election, so she challenges both of them to a presidential debate at once. This is the end of Aaliyah Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian Episode 7. Thank you so much for staying on this channel and watching our videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with our latest content. See you in the next video.